Welcome to this lecture on thermal energy storage systems for buildings. As you can imagine, the energy demand does not often occur at the same time energy is produced, especially in the case of renewable energy supply. A very clear example is the seasonal mismatch between heating demand in a relatively cold climate and the solar energy potential in the same climate. But there are also hourly differences between demand and supply occurring each day, as is illustrated in this figure. Thermal energy storage can be used to overcome this mismatch and to make better use of the energy potentials. In general, it can be used to store thermal energy for later use. This can have many advantages, such as using energy when the price is low or reducing the capacity of the equipment needed, since the peak demand can be supplied with the thermal energy stored. Thermal energy can be divided into three types. Sensible thermal energy, which is related to the temperature. Latent thermal energy, which is the energy needed to achieve a phase change of a material. And lastly, thermochemical energy, which is the storage of thermal energy in chemical bonds. In all these cases, the energy transferred to and from the storage system happens by heat. Today, we will mainly discuss sensible thermal energy storage. Sensible heat storage is achieved by changing the temperature of the storage medium. This is usually water, but can also be sand or concrete. Also in the thermal mass of buildings, for example in concrete or brick walls, energy can be stored. The amount of sensible heat stored is calculated by multiplying the related mass with the specific heat capacity and the temperature difference before and after the storage is charged or discharged. As an example, the thermal energy stored in a hot water buffer is shown. The boiler has a volume of, two of 200 liters and the temperature is raised with 30 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of water is 4,2 kJ per gallon Kelvin. The thermal energy stored is thus 200 times 30 times 4,2, which equals 25,200 kilojoules. If you divide this value by 3,600, you will get the energy content in the unit kilowatt hours, resulting in a value of 7 kilowatt hours of thermal energy stored. This is enough for taking 7 showers of 5 minutes. The same principle is used for larger thermal energy storage, as can be used for smaller or larger multifamily buildings or non-residential buildings, and even for neighborhoods. The very large tank shown on the left can even be used for seasonal storage. As you can see, enormous volumes are needed for seasonal thermal energy storage. Therefore, also the subsurface is often used for seasonal thermal energy storage. Subsurface aquifers, underground layers of sand with groundwater, can be used to store heat. These systems are called ATES systems, Aquifer Thermal Energy Storage. In these systems, two wells are drilled, which will become a cold well and a warm well. In summer, groundwater is extracted from the cold well. It passes through a heat exchanger in order to cool a building. The heat from the building is transferred to the groundwater, which is then injected into the warm well. In summer, the reverse happens. Warm water from the warm well is extracted to be used for heating the building. Since the water stored usually has a maximum temperature of 25 degrees, a heat pump is used to, for to further upgrade the temperature. The cooled groundwater is injected in the cold well again. On an annual basis, the heat and cold extracted must be in balance. Also, ground heat exchangers can be used to cool and heat buildings combined with a heat pump. These systems are called BTES systems, borehole thermal energy storage. Vertical boreholes are the most common, but also horizontal ground ex heat exchangers can be applied. The figure on the right shows a scheme of a dwelling with a heat pump using a horizontal ground heat exchanger as a source for the heat pump. The feasibility, the feasibility of an ATAS system depends on the properties of the subsurface. The following map shows the worldwide suitability for applying ATAS systems. Hence, as you have seen, sensible thermal energy storage can be found in many sizes and for different storage periods, from short-term to long-term, even seasonal storage. Now, I would like to briefly mention latent thermal energy storage. In the change of phase of a material, for example from liquid to solid or from solid to liquid, 
a lot of heat is required or released. This phenomenon can be used to store energy. The most well-known phase change material obviously is water. In the phase change from water to ice, the energy released is 80 times as much energy as uh, cooling down the same amount of water with 1 degree Celsius. For the built environment, various other types of phase change materials have been developed and are still being developed. These usually have a higher melting point, which means much energy can be stored at these temperatures. Summarizing this lecture, you have learned about the different types of thermal energy storage. You can also roughly calculate sensible thermal energy storage capacity. And please remember that you can use storage to make better use of renewable energy potentials.